As anticipated as the fall foliage, this weekend has been special. It began with a bang eight decades ago when Gene McEver ran back the opening kickoff. For 65 years, the sidelines have featured headliners, legends, the gentleman Robert Neelan, and a gentleman known simply as Bear. And a series which has served as a great stage for leading men, like Kenny Stabler's comeback in 1966, and speedy Willie Galt, who led a ball win in 1982. All a part of a spectacle of college football, crimson red and bright orange, the colors of fall, and the third Saturday in October. The Crimson Tide of Alabama. And what is about to happen, one of the great traditions in all of college football. When that tee splits, the balls will come out to the roar of 97,000, and the players say they can't feel their feet hit the turf. And here they come. Neyland Stadium, they are standing. We are set to get this 1994 version of Alabama and Tennessee underway. Alabama has won the toss. They have elected to receive. Gibson is back deep as Bexford. The senior out of Chattanooga gets a foot into it. And we're off and going. Marcel West breaks it at the 25. And Bexport will finally knock him out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Now the starting lineups brought to you by Russell Athletic. For the Crimson Tide of Alabama, Jay Barker, he threw some at practice yesterday, but not a great deal. His effectiveness, well, it's essential for Alabama to be successful tonight. The wide receivers, Patrick Malone, he's the big play man. Gene Stallings is hoping that Jay Barker can get the ball to him. And on the offensive line, number 69, well, Stevenson is probably playing the most consistently of all right now. Before the snap, we have illegal motion, offensive team, five yards. Well, that's what the noise will do to you here at this stadium. Kareem McNeil came out of his stance, five yards, stepped off against Alabama. Fakes it to Williams, holds on to it, and he's going to run it. And will get out of bounds, sliding at the 39-yard line. The starters on defense for Tennessee. Ben Talley has made the switch from linebacker to that defensive end spot that's really helped the defense. So the new face at linebacker, number 47, Tyrone Hines, and that has made a great difference as well. And in the secondary, safety Jason Parker. Coaches say that he's playing the best in that position coming into this ball game. to Williams. Nice open field tackle, but he's close to the first down at the 44-yard line. Jason Parker, the young man we were just talking about, came up to make the stick on him. Ron, Jay Barker tonight needs the same kind of game and same type of game plan he had against Georgia, where they open it up throwing the football, a lot of play action passes, and that will open up Sherman Williams in the running game. I have a feeling that probably Gene Stallings' heart jumped up in his throat on that first play when he kept the ball and ran on the, the pass play. Well, he slid down just near the end line, so he didn't want to take that hit. They'll have the first down of Sherman Williams. The senior will take it out across the 45 to the 48. Mike Adam Lee, let's uh, go back down to you quickly. Well, officially running, Mike, Jay Barker's injury, not a separation, not a torn rotary cuff, a severe sprain with muscle spasms. The biggest thing that the trainers are concerned about, not his throwing, but whether or not he gets hit or land on that shoulder. That's the thing that we'll watch. It's a great point, and that's probably one of the reasons I brought up the thing about him running on that first down. Throws that one complete to Curtis Brown. 
So in the short strike to the 45 yard line, it's going to bring up a second down and about three for Alabama. First down is a big down for both these offenses tonight. The veteran quarterback Jay Barker, the rookie quarterback Peyton Manning, because it gives you so many luxuries on second and third to be second and three yards to go. You can go either way. First down, Tennessee wants to own it on defense, Alabama wants to own it on offense. You see Alabama comes out with two tight ends. Actually, they split one off as both Pate and Rutledge are in the ballgame. Tennessee shows blitz and they come with it. And Williams gets to the outside. Inside the 40, pushed out of bounds near the 35 by Ronald Davis. Nice block by Tarrant Lynch. Tarrant Lynch, the fullback, number 45, really gets a good seal block here. On number 47, Tyrone Hines, the new linebacker, and Sherman Williams picks up the first down. Mike, how important is it for Alabama to have success, particularly to score a touchdown on this opening drive here? Well, you talk about Tennessee, they think they're jinxed in the series, so if you go behind, all of a sudden those figures of losing so many games to Alabama starts to pop up. There again, positive yardage, and so far that's the way it's been with the running game. It's been since 1985 since Tennessee has defeated Alabama. And of course, last year, so disappointing, 17-17 tie. Bama had to do that in the last 60 seconds of play. David Palmer with the two-point play, but Alabama feels they own Tennessee. Tennessee seniors would like to win this football game. They have not beaten an Alabama squad. Williams again, Lynch in front with the block. He gets a good one and he breaks it open inside the 20 and is going to be caught inside the 15 by Raymond Austin. What Alabama is doing is sealing Tennessee inside. Karen Lynch is going to get a block again on Tyrone. That's on number one this time. Ronald Davis really opened it up for Sherman Williams and then you see the defensive back trying to take the ball away. That's Raymond Austin, number 28. Austin came very close to ripping it away from him as Williams gets a break and Steger will come in. Look at this. 18 times they've scored inside the 20. 10 touchdowns, 8 field goals. Steger goes to the left side. He'll be inside the 5-yard line. Jason Parker again up from the secondary and we have him unofficially already for three tackles not a good sign for the volunteers No, it's not a good sign because I felt like tonight that the defensive line of Tennessee had to whip the offensive line of Alabama They felt like that was an edge for them so far in this game as we start this ball game Alabama's offensive line is knocking them off the line of scrimmage Mike we haven't had anything close to negative yardage winning first down four plus yards is a win four for four for Alabama they try to go to the left, and this time the shortest gain of the night on this series, a gain of maybe one, is Shane Burton on that left defensive tackle spot, comes across to make the hit. And then Austin up from the secondary to help as well. Ron Larry Marmy, the defensive coordinator, was talking about Jay Barker, and he said, you know, he's underrated. The thing he does, most quarterbacks would love to do. He leads you to wins. He avoids the rush, and he moves around, and he makes big plays. And I don't, I don't know of any other quarterback you'd like to have in there, but a guy's 29 one and one Timeout is called by Tennessee, so we'll take it with him. 10:27 left in his opening quarter. This situation on third down. Barker puts it on his hip for the end zone. Nobody is there. Rich is the man that he wanted. Ron, they didn't buy the fake at all. Steve White, number 64, knew they were going to run a play action pass. He didn't take the fake and he was in to put pressure on Jay Barker. Jay Barker with an excellent fake just to give there. They thought he'd give the football, but you see number 64, Steve White, he didn't buy it at all. Never gave the play time to develop. So that means that Proctor will attempt this field goal from a severe angle from 21 yards away. And he knocks it home. So we'll hold it right here with 10 minutes and 18 seconds left in this opening quarter. It is Alabama, 3 to nothing. Excellent drive by Alabama. Jay Barker, the quarterback, engineered it three points and again Ron you have to think if you're Tennessee when a team has your number and they go down the field like that they've struggled offensively all year except in the Georgia game and all of a sudden they play you a little differently and this 
this may be a team, an Alabama team that plays according to the competition. You may be exactly right. Let's uh, show you the standings, first of all, in the east of the Southeastern Conference. Florida with a 4-1 and one record after being surprised at home today. Then South Carolina, Tennessee at 2-2, two and two, Georgia, Vanderbilt, and Kentucky. In the west, here are the standings. Alabama, 3-0, and oh, Mississippi State. Also, Arkansas with two victories, then LSU, Ole Miss, and of course, Auburn, uh, not eligible for the SEC title, 5-0 and and 7-0. and And we would be remiss if we didn't say, that to me is one of the really great stories I've seen in a long time in college football. I think they have a leg up on winning the national championship now if they can just win out, even Billy, though they're not going to play in a bowl game. That was Billy Williams you were looking at. He is finally healthy again. He'll take the kickoff from the two. Gets by the wedge and will be knocked down at the 23-yard line. So let's check the starters. Peyton Manning, hard to find a freshman who has ever started in this game, but tonight Manning puts his name in the record books. Wide receivers, Billy Williams, as we mentioned, he's finally healthy. All the offensive coaches are smiling about that because you got it doubling. Under the offensive line, Bubba Miller, normally the starting center. He's got a broken right hand, so he and Jeff Smith will interchange. Smith will be at center tonight. Peyton Manning, you could see the shift at the last minute as Stewart goes straight ahead with the running play, and he'll take it for a couple. As we look at the starters on defense for the 4-3 Alabama Crimson Tie, 98 Matt Parker playing very well right now. In fact, he returned a fumble for a touchdown just last week. The linebackers, Ralph Staten, still having problems with an injured elbow, but he's starting tonight. They need his leadership. And Sam Shade in the secondary, still not back starting at that strong safety spot. In fact, tonight, Cedric Samuel moves from his cornerback position, and Shade will play tonight, but he will not start in his ball game. Play action, slip screen to the corner. And a nice open field stop at the 29 as Billy Williams made the reception. It's Calvin Moore, number 95, that made the tackle the defensive end. If you look at Peyton Manning's statistics, 519 yards, four touchdowns, and two interceptions. And they'd like to get him off with some confidence tonight. That was a little quick throw there to give him some confidence here early. Well, a former patient. He knows that. The Crimson Tide is going to give the freshman a lot of different looks and deception tonight. Stewart to the left side. Turns it up. He'll have the first down as he crosses the 35. And Willie Gaston has to come up from the secondary to make the hit. Credit Jace, uh, Lehman. Jason Lehman with a good paving block. Ron, I'll tell you who really had a good block also. Mose Phillips, number 19, the fullback. When you're in the eye, you're an eye team. Mose Phillips with a good block. Lehman with a good block. James Stewart in there for the first down, and Tennessee's going to win this game tonight. Their offensive line has to win this football game. They have to control the defensive front of Alabama and establish the running game. Jason Lehman said by the coaches to be probably playing better than anybody on that offensive front right now. He's number 66. Manning, James the pass, complete. Kendrick Jones across midfield, and now here comes a late flag. 20 yards in the play. Ron, you blitz. Here's Willie Gaston. He's going to blitz inside, outside to try to get to the freshman early. And you talk about an impressive play now. This throw to Kendrick Jones is right on the money. That's an out pattern that a lot of people on Sunday don't throw that well. The flag down, you could see the face mask. And now we'll see if it's five yards or if it is, in fact, 15. They're going to mark off five. You know, Bill Oliver yesterday at Alabama's practice, he said he throws the out enough said that, that was an out pass across the field with a lot of zip on that ball. That'll make him quit blitzing. <laughs> Eight minutes and 32 seconds left in this opening quarter. It has been nonstop action. Alabama took the opening series, got a field goal. They lead 3 0. Stewart breaks by one tackler, but Willie Gaston will finish him off. You could see he got by Ralph Staten first, but then Gaston was right there to make the hit. Talking to David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator, and he said that Bear Bryant's philosophy, and he, he feels Bill Oliver is the same. He's one of his pupils. He said is that you either storm the fort or you cover it. You don't do both. So if they decide that they want to blitz this guy tonight, they're going to continue to blitz him the entire ball game. Well, speaking of smiles for different coaching staff, 75, Shannon Brown. 
You remember, injured that arm so badly against Georgia. Well, he's in the game. Couldn't start tonight, but that means a lot. Pressure from behind. Damian Jeffries will have the sack on Manning. You don't want a lot of plays to take a long time for the freshman quarterback because here's the play action pass. Jeffries is going to come off the corner. They just had a bust in their blocking scheme by Leslie Ratliff, number 75, but Damian Jeffries with pressure on Peyton Manning in the sack. So it's a loss of eight, and it will be third down on the line to make for Tennessee is the Alabama 29. Only three rushing down linemen this time, and they go with the rush. Stewart tries to get it outside, almost breaks by Willie Gaston, but he's going to be short of the first down by six yards. See, they're thinking right now, Ron, as people might say, well, why didn't they throw? You got a freshman quarterback, and you're throwing against a heavy group of defensive backs in there. Why not just hand it off to James Stewart and see what he can get for you and not force the throw and force the interception? So the line of scrimmage is the 35, and they are lining up for a 52-yard field goal attempt by John Duxford. His longest in warm-up today was 49 yards, Mike. Good snap. He's got the distance, but not the accuracy. Just wide run. So there's a timeout. Three to nothing, Alabama. 6:25 left in this opening quarter. With Alabama leading Tennessee three to nothing late in the first quarter, the Volunteers move the ball downfield with the ground game. As we pick up the action with the start of the second quarter, Tennessee has the ball on the Alabama 17, third down and four, here on ESPN Classic. Welcome back to Knoxville, Tennessee. Ron Franklin along with Mike Godfrey. Three to nothing to Crimson Tide on top. Mike, let's go back to what we talked about off the top of the telecast. The two quarterbacks, Peyton Manning, first freshman ever. Jay Barker, the injured shoulder. What's a game of quarterbacks? Jay Barker, the veteran quarterback. Tennessee's blitzed him quite a bit in the first quarter. Al at Tennessee with Peyton Manning. They're, they're trying to make him make mistakes, the Alabama defense. Well, right now, as we begin the second 15 minutes of play, it is a third down, and they need the 13-yard line. Straight ahead with a running play, and they will have the first down. Hayden off the left side, and it's some fine blocking by Lehman, Mays, and Miller. Tennessee went to a wide-open formation, making you think they're going to throw the football. No tight end in the ball game. Just slipped the ball to Aaron Hayden, trying to spread Alabama out. Bubba Miller, number 71, just leading the play. Kevin All Mays. 285 pounds of him. Kevin Mays also, Mike. Those two youngsters with key blocks on that one. Hayden will take it to the six. And all of a sudden, that offensive line and the running game, as a flag goes down, the key right now for the volunteers. You can circle Aaron Hayden because he's be, he's been responsible with some good blocking for getting this drive moving. Personal foul against Alabama. It's Mike DeBose, the defensive uh, line coach, trying to get somebody out of the ball game. Well, Kevin Moore is the one coming out of the game, and Gene Stallings is stalking him, so I would uh, assume that's who he wanted to talk to. And Gene's not asking him about his class work. You bet on that. <laughs> it is a first and goal volunteer. And Alabama says we want to take a timeout. So we'll take it with us. Three to nothing. Alabama and Tennessee on the lip of the cup. Our situation. First and goal from the three for the Orange of Tennessee. Hayden hit in the backfield. And it's Shannon Brown, number 75 who penetrated the line of scrimmage and knocks him down for no game. The Woody Hayes robust T lives again here at Tennessee. T formation, Aaron Hayden behind both block, the blocking of the right half back. You see the T right here. Give to Hayden, you get two lead blockers, but neither blocker blocked Shannon Brown. Shannon with that uh, shoulder injury a couple of weeks ago, you could see the grimace on his face. Second and goal. Left side, still pumping. 
loses the football, and I believe, let's see, Alabama has recovered at the four. Well, it looked like Tommy Johnson, number 10, with the hit on James Stewart. Well, there's the hit, number 52, Michael Rogers. Now there's Tommy Johnson, number 10, trying to drag the ball away from him. But what a hit by Michael Rogers, number 52. Michael going to give credit to John Tarks making the recovery on the fumble. So Tennessee with the turnover, their second of the night, their 18th of the year, and the tackle at the one-yard line didn't get him in the end zone, but they got him at the one-foot line. Ben Talley. Well, Ron, what you think about here if you're Gene Stallings, you either quarterback sneak it to try to give you a little bit of room to maneuver, or you go deep here with the one-receiver route, just try to run one receiver just to get out of here. Little man Stewart, who had the turnover just a second ago, being counseled by his teammates. The defense right now saying we're going to take it over at the one. It is second down, and now a timeout has been called by Jimmy Harper. I think somebody threw something out of the end zone stands. Fans do not throw eyes on the field. That's people in the end zone do not throw anything on the field. That's Mike, so much. That Mike, we saw things coming out of the end zone, and Jimmy Harper asking the folks in the end zone who are very close not to throw any kind of ice cups or debris onto the field. Ron, you got to be very cautious here if you're Alabama. You don't want to toss the ball. It has to be a quick handoff or quarterback sneak. That's what they go with. Barker straight ahead. Scott Gayton, number 93, is the man on top of the pile. And now it will be third down. See, just that little play there gives you a couple yards to maneuver here. That's Woody McCorvey, the receiver coach right there. And we have in the picture who's relaying the plays from Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator, to the quarterback. We have a shaken up player, it looks like, Steve White. No, oh, Billy Barron, 94 rather than 64, is being helped off the field. Good effort by Tarrant Lynch to pick up anything, and it'll be a kicking situation. Mike, would you go after the punter here? Well, you, you got you got possibilities both sides. One, if you go after the punter and you don't get it, uh, you know, of course, you still got the fair catch on the other side. I think in this situation, I would rather try the return here. I remember that the Sean Summers, the return man, is not playing tonight for Tennessee. So you got Nile Silva, a new punt returner, back catching the football. Deal is standing about a yard and a half from the base of the end zone. This is a very good coverage kick. Silver with a fair catch at the Tennessee 48. That's a 47 yard punt. Let's take a break. At the 48, first, first and 10. Play action by Manny. Manny, he's going to go on top. Double coverage and the ball tipped and intercepted. Tommy Johnson will come away with it. And he's trying to return it. Just like a punt, Ron. I don't, don't mind that play by Peyton Manning because trying to get those corners off of you, you, you give away some field position, but that's just like a punt. The ball's on the 16-yard line. Tommy Johnson. Alabama again, Willie Gaston is going to be in great shape here. And Tommy Johnson, number 10, looked like Peyton Manning just threw everything he has. But you see the double coverage, and that's the mistake. Ball tipped up. Wise decision by Tommy Johnson would have been to kneel down and take the ball at the 20. He wanted to return that thing, didn't he? line Mike he's got to be a little frustrated as they sit getting a breather on the bench I mean they have moved the football and done their job they just have no points to share that's exactly what Alabama wanted they wanted to force the freshman to make mistakes this is 
Williams. And you can see he crosses the orange stripe. He'll have the first down. Scott Galen, who was one of our Sega student athletes of the game, we mentioned just a moment ago, makes the tackle. It's amazing to me to watch Alabama. They struggle with teams they're supposed to beat. And then they play against Georgia, a team that's going to bring Eric Zire to town. And now all of a sudden, they, Jay Barker throws for a career high throw on the football. Now they're against Tennessee, and their running games come back. They're mixing the plays pretty well. I mean, they just seem to play to the competition. First and 10 from their own third. Barker, nobody stayed at home, and he's going to run it. And didn't get to slide down quite as quickly that time as he will be out at the 37 by Ray Austin. Again, I'm really good, surprised he's running, carrying the ball as much well, as he Well, he had to there. It was a good play fake, and there was <laughs> pass. I mean, everything was covered in the secondary, and no one was out there to contain him. Three to nothing, if you've just joined us. Alabama, they got that on their opening drive. We have just gone under 10 minutes left in this opening half. Draw play. the 45 yard line for the first down for the Crimson Tide. When your quarterback steps back there and fakes the pass like Jay Barker's doing, it's just enough to freeze your linebackers to take that little false step that they've got to go back into, drop back into coverage, and then the linemen are on them. Terrence Lynch with two big gains on that play, the draw. Williams, and that's a nice job as Shane Burton, number 84, grabbed him by the ankle. He had blockers in front. But Burton got just enough of him to bring him down. Talked about winning on first down. Four plus yards is a win if you can gain four plus on first down. Six out of 12, Alabama has done very well on first down. Make the counter tray. Barker throws it too low. And a good thing because it was nice coverage on the play. Brown on the comeback, but Davis was all over him. Malone and Chad Key will come into the lineup for the Crimson Tide in this third and ten. Key, number 19, very lanky receiver. Former quarterback has the good hands, possession type receiver. Two Barker's looking for no, gets it to Todrick Malone. And Todrick's going to be short of the first down. George Kidd and Craig King combining on the stop for the Volunteers. What Jay Barker does best is able to move around in the pocket and find receivers open. Todrick Malone almost had the first down when he made the catch. And then he went backwards. Steve White with some good pressure. See him come back. He was at the line and may have had the first down, but he was trying to gain more. And I think this is a good decision by Gene Stallings. He got a struggling freshman quarterback, put him in the hole. And again, another very good coverage kick. And a bound at the one, but goes into the end zone on a Tennessee roll. 46 yards in the punt. We'll have seven minutes and 49 seconds left in this opening half. Ron, and here's a Texas native, Brandon Stewart, coming into the game at quarterback. Brandon out of Stephenville, Texas. And little man Stewart, James, will go off the left side, and he will take it for a gain of a couple as Dwayne Rudd is there to hit him. Early in the season, Jerry Colquitt was a starter. He got hurt in the UCLA game. Then Todd Helton came in, and he got hurt in the Mississippi State game. Really, what's happening to Tennessee by playing Peyton Manning, number 16, and Brandon Stewart, number 6, will be a blessing in disguise because next year now you've got established quarterbacks, so it'll help them in the future. You're not just established, Mike. You're talking about rare talents, both of them. Stewart will have it across the 25. Again, it's Rudd. 
Here's a report from the bench and Billy Barron. We saw him uh, taken off the field just a while ago. A sprained right hip. And they will determine at halftime whether he will see any more action. And as Peyton Manning paces the sideline, he has been spelled by Brandon Stewart here in this midway portion of the second quarter. Brandon Stewart has excellent ability to run the football. And here he is right here with just that, Matt. the 44 first and 10 volunteers that's what he gives you on the football field not only a good throwing quarterback but also a very gifted athlete that can run the football and when you trap him or you get him in a situation where nothing's open he becomes very dangerous doing what he's doing right now running the football Willie Gaston finally makes the tackle number 22 that's a gain of 17 Stephenville the winner of the State championship class 4A in the state of Texas last year under his guidance. They were undefeated. Pass almost intercepted. And Tommy Johnson was just playing possum with him. Laid off the ball, and that would have been a touchdown. Again, baited him into this, but you see this formation of Tennessee's trying to run. It's really an unbalanced formation. You got two, only two linemen back here. You got a tackle being the tight end, and you got two receivers over here. So, really unbalanced to that side. They're trying to get an extra blocker versus the eight man front. But you see, Brandon Stewart was too slow throwing the football. Mm -hmm. Tommy Johnson could have had seven. James Littleman Stewart. And Alabama likes the fact of what they're trying to do defensively. They figure that Tennessee having to go 80 yards continually will make mistakes. Now, they're going to get some gains against us because they got that big offensive line, but they will make mistakes before they score. And that's the thinking of Bill Oliver, the defensive coordinator. See the line blocking here, just a quick trap up inside. Good blocking by wide wide receivers and Jeff Smith number 74 with a good career out block. Well Hayden's in the ball game now as they get a fresh tail back in. Pass is zipped over the middle complete to Joey Kent. And that's another Tennessee first down. Cedric Samuel defensively. Now I think Bill Oliver is going to have to heat up Brandon Stewart because the last thing you want is a freshman coming in here and all of a sudden thinking he's in rhythm. So now you've got to try to take him out of rhythm somehow. And the best way to do it is send a linebacker, send a corner after Brandon Stewart and try to upset his rhythm. Tennessee on first down, five for 12. So good success for them, just under 50%. The running play as they were shooting the gap, but that's uh, Jeffries coming from a wider split out on the right side was able to get his ankle and stop him for a very short gain. Philip Fulmer walking the sideline just was talking to one of the coaches, and I'm sure the point he's trying to make to them is, hey, we want to come away with something this time. We want to knock this game up, but we don't want to turn this football over. We'd like to have the touchdown, but let's make sure one thing: we don't turn it over and give that back to Alabama. We want points. Well, Tennessee offensively in this ball game is already over 130 yards total offense. If there's been a manhole cover like Mike Allen the reporter on this field. Stewart is going to fall down. Lost his balance and he's going to wind up losing almost 10 yards in the play. And Jeffries was the closest man to him. Now the situation. You go to third down. The first down at marker is down at the 17 yard line. And the point here, you got to pick up yardage because you're out of field goal range if you don't. Well, if Tennessee holds true to what they've done so far in this ball game. They'll go to a spread formation and run the football here, try to get some yardage and set up the field goal. If they hold true to form, that's exactly what they'll try to do. Alabama three, Tennessee nothing. About to go into four minutes left in the opening half. The ball is delivered complete at the 25 to Kent. And first and goal, Tennessee at the 7. Talk about having confidence in a freshman quarterback. They didn't stay true to form. They faked the ball to the, on the run to Aaron Hayden and found Joey Kent on a crossing route. 
There's a missed tackle by Cedric Samuel, number 13. And Tennessee's back in business inside the 10. 27 yards in the pass play. Story. Submarine as he will have one. Ralph Staten is at the bottom of the pile, number 41. Ron, has, has Brandon Stewart come on this field and been impressive? I mean, this young guy has really made things happen. Mike, you know, and it shows not only both of these, these freshmen possess so many physical qualities, but what both have demonstrated mentally, they possess some great qualities as well as far as resolve and calm. And you look at Peyton Manning. Brandon Stewart had the opportunity. He had the benefit of watching Peyton Manning, so he has an understanding of what Alabama's trying to do on defense. They reverse it. Nilo Silva. Same play that they scored against Washington State on, but a nice job by this very quick Alabama defense, and Gaston would not be fooled. Willie Gaston with a really solid tackle. Randy Sanders, the running back coach with Phil Fulmer. And Tennessee's going to take a timeout. 237 left until the halftime. Alabama three to nothing. Three to nothing. And the situation is it is third down for the volunteers of Tennessee. The ball is resting just outside the four yard line. Brandon Stewart, the second true freshman quarterback to play in his first half of the volunteers. Peyton Manning got the start. And the running play will lose yardage to the eight. Andre Royal is the first man to come through and make the hit. In trying to take the pressure off the freshman, but again, that, that play was dissected by Andre Royal, number 36. Matt Parker, number 98. There was not anything there. Parker has been playing very good football for the Crimson Tide. We mentioned in the lineups that he had a fumble return for a touchdown last week. And now the pressure moves back to this fellow, John Bexford. He is over one tonight, four of 11 on the season. But this one will be squarely in the middle of the field at the 16 yard line. And we're tied. the key play in this drive number 11 right here Joey Kent the receivers on this side are going to clear out and Joey Kent's going to just come across the field and Brandon Stewart is going to hit him on a dead run which is a big play that sets this field go up but again you credit the Alabama defense because they were not to be denied to give up the six points now, this is the way the comparison goes as far as the two freshman quarterback for Tennessee tonight. Manning started two of five, 22 yards, two interceptions. And Brandon Stewart, who just came in on that uh, last series, two of three, his numbers after one sequence. And I really think it's unfortunate. The, the one interception by Peyton Manning was one they just wanted to air out. It was good defensive coverage. deep and not going to be returned by Alabama. Mike Adamley, let's go back to you and check in. Well, Ron, going back to the tale of two freshman quarterback, you have to give Coach Phil Fulmer a lot of credit in handling these two young men's what could be fragile psyches. He pulled off the SEC recruiting coup of the last 10 years by getting them both to come to Tennessee. And any time he makes a comment about Peyton Manning, he always mentions in the same breath Brandon Stewart. And Brandon to his credit has kept his head up while Peyton has started. Now it's Brandon's turn to shine. Alabama has a minute 50 on the clock until halftime. The Barker, the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. And let's see, that's Leland Taylor. Yep, 57, the sophomore out of Louisville, who got a hand up and knocked it down. Mike's talking about both these quarterbacks as you see Jay Barker. The tip by Leland Taylor. It's tough to keep two guys happy, especially when they were stars in high school and all of a sudden come here and one's on the field. But Mike Adamley's right. They've done a nice job of continually communicating with those quarterbacks. Tennessee's 
Tennessee has one timeout left. Now. Drills it complete, Chad Key. Boy, he got belted by Ray Austin after he made the reception. But that'll move the chains because it's good for 17. Alabama's going to take a timeout. They have one left. So we'll take that timeout with him. A minute 38 until halftime. We'll go away just for a bit. With Alabama and Tennessee all tied at three, we pick up the action early in the second half. Bama has the ball at midfield, first down and 10, right here on ESPN Classic. Mike Adam Lee, let's go down to you. Regarding the shoulder of Jay Barker, so much was made of it. So far, so good. It, no stiffness. This is some of the action from the first half. To my count, he was hit not once, not twice, but about five different times. Each time he got up, after the series was over, he went back to the bench and went right on the headset to talk to Homer Smith and not to the trainer. So, so far, he's doing well. And there you see the stats. Two quarterbacks at and eight hurries. Ron, he avoided a sack on the last play. Yeah. He has a strong lower body and he avoids the sack. A little bigger than some realize at 6'4. Speaking of bigger than you realize, Sherman Williams spins off two tacklers and will have the Alabama first down at the 41. Parker finally nailed it. Sherman in the first half, up inside, not a lot there for the little back. But where they've really had some success is to the left side. 52 yards. Now, in the last play, they went to the right side. The same type of play on a three backfield set with Sherman Williams carrying the football. Get everything sealed inside of Tennessee's defense. He's 11 rushes, 67 yards. Williams, you can see the quick pursuit to be jumped right over the tackle. They had him for a loss. Tyrone Hines finally put a stopper on him, but he'll pick up about three yards. Tyrone Hines, the linebacker, he wasn't really ready in the first three games because if you remember, Tennessee played UCLA, Wayne Cook, and uh, Stokes. They played uh, Florida with their passing attack and Eric Zire. He wasn't ready to take on the passing game. He's more of a run linebacker and was a little bit behind, but now he's caught up and gives him more speed. You see, here comes the blitz, and they get outside of it. This is Steger, and he is tripped up and will go down at the 35. That was Gaylor. Scott got a hand out and tripped him up, or he had a lot of green in front of him. Defensively, when you look at this Tennessee defense in the first three ball games, UCLA, Georgia, and Florida, they were one and two, and then they came back against Mississippi State, Washington State, Arkansas, more of a traditional running teams, and have two and one with those three teams. It is third down. Alabama one of seven on third down conversions. Steger left side and with the second effort he is going to have the first down as he spins his way inside the 30. Whew, what an effort. Steve White and George Kidd combined in the stop. Tied at three. We're about to go under 11 minutes to play in the third quarter. The counter play. Barker got him wide open at the 15 yard line at the 10. Marcel West will break out of the tackle and he'll score. Jay Barker. Mike and they were faking the counterplay and the fake was ideal along Barker with the blitz. Was a low developing play but Jay Barker made that happen. Barker trying to put the tie up by seven and he does. So as we go to break let's take one more look at it. the very quick throw. Marcel West grabs it up. He scores.
10 to 3 as the Crimson Tide has scored the first touchdown of the evening by either club. Marcel West on the sideline celebrating. That is his, by the way, his first career touchdown, Mike. And of all the games, there's a guy who was working against Austin. Well, actually, he was working against more than Austin, but uh, he split the tacklers and took it in for the six points as Watts will kick it off for Alabama. And this is going to come up to Billy Williams at the five. Williams breaks it open. All the way out to the 45-yard line. What you want in a quarterback is somebody that's aware. You're going to see a blitz by number 45, Nick Jester. Jay Barker has a slow developing play. Now, stop it right here. Now, see the pressure. He knows he's going to get pressure up inside and pressure outside is coming. He pulls up the football with the football. Good awareness, throws off his back foot, still gets the touchdown pass to Marcel West. There's sometimes when you got a quarterback, it just stinks. And the best thing you can say about Jay Barker, among many things, is he wins. He knows how to get the ball in the end zone. We have a player shaken up as uh, Peyton Manning comes trotting on. And it would appear that it's uh, that it's Watts, the man they call Wild Thing. He handles the kickoffs, and it would appear that Watts has injured that uh, left shoulder. We'll get a report on him. Good field position for Tennessee. Alabama leads early third quarter. And he dumps it off in the flat. This is Aaron Hayden. Inside the 15. Ron Joey Kent with a block that really extended that play into a long gaining play. A little short pass. Just out of the backfield, something that they feel like Peyton Manning can just control right here. Here's the pass. Now we're going to pick up number 11 down the field. Now, again, good yardage, but let's see if we see number 11. There's the block right there by Joey Kent. Just brings Aaron Hayden down to inside the 15. Mike, there was Ralph Staten, 41, that, that he got the step on. He had the cover on him. Very Bye. close to a clip, too. 41 yards in the pass play. They look up. The 25-second clock is about to run out, and Tennessee has called a timeout. So we'll take it with them. 10-3, Alabama. We'll be right back to Knoxville after this. Alabama scored in their last possession. We just had a 41-yard pass play that Aaron Hayden took and went up the sidelines with first and 10 at the 12 for the Volunteers. Kind of had trouble trying to run it in here. Maybe they're throwing first down. Nope, going with the run. Hayden puts the head down. Not much there. Maybe a couple. It's Damian Jeffries from his defensive end position. They just had trouble when they get inside the 20-yard line against this Alabama defense. Second down and eight. The ball at the 10-yard line. Running play, boy, there is nothing. Michael Rogers stepped up into the hole. And you can hear scattered. Well, they're not scattered anymore. A lot of boos from this crowd. Michael Rogers, when I watched him play last year, he's one of those type of football players, when he tackles you, you go backwards. He's an excellent tackler. Senior linebacker playing the middle linebacker position and it's going to take a throw to get this ball in the end zone against this Alabama defense. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. Third down. The line they need is the two. Dumps it off. Hayden, he will have the first down. He does not get into the end zone, but that'll move the sticks. tell you something your eyesight is getting a lot better all the time because to see that he picked up the first down it was real close but Hayden stayed with the play 
He was an alternate and outlet receiver. Just caught the ball from Peyton Manning on a good decision and picked up enough for the first down. What eyesight you have. Well, they needed the two and it's at the one. I mean, good heavens, that's a yard, even from up here. <laughs> even old eyes. I eye, what big eyes you have. <laughs> point to tie us at 10. And he does. Well, there's the story. 15 minutes left in this one, the third Saturday in October. It's been back in 1985, the last time Tennessee defeated the Crimson Tide. Last year was a tie. Here's a drop play to Williams. Bounces off one tackler, gets to the outside, has five, 10, 15, and counted off. They're going to see a gain of 17 on the play. Another flag, too. I think they hit him out, out of bounds. It'll be a penalty on Tennessee. Had him stopped, Ron, and he bounced outside. Dead ball after the man is out of bounds. Personal foul, defense, 15, first down. The ability of Sherman Williams to find the hole. You lose him behind those offensive linemen, then he bounces outside. Now he's out of bounds, and there's the hit that they're calling the penalty on. Ronald Davis. So the penalty moves it to the 30. That's the Tennessee 30. Williams outside on the right, cuts it back inside. And he is close to another first down. In fact, he is going to have it. Corey Gaines is there to make the tackle. Sherman Williams has stepped it up tonight. Has made some big plays for this Alabama offense. First and ten from the Tennessee 20. This time they'll get the stop. Jonathan Brown is down at the bottom of the pile along with Ben Talley. A very dangerous situation there for McNeil. You could see he got his leg caught underneath that pile going the wrong direction. But he got up and ran away, so that's good. Sherman Williams. Gets a break, and Brian Steger, 28, comes in replacing him. There's that drop play. Lynch, he'll have a couple. Nicely uh, done by Scott Galen, the junior out of Seymour. Well, the more you see a play like that, the more you get used to defending it. Scott Galen's seen it about five times tonight, and they've had success with it. But he was able to step up there and make the play on Terrence Lynch. chance to develop you see the defensive outside linebackers Gallion and Sanders were able to get up into the face of the defensive or the offensive tackles to stop that play so Proctor attempting this field goal of 44 yards lost 
his footing. Well short. So let's take a break, and as we go to break, you'll see one more look at what happened with Michael Proctor, who is very true, but look at his plant foot. Very short yardage, maybe a gain of one, and this crowd continues to react. You look at the comparison, Peyton Manning tonight, four of nine, 71 yards, two interceptions. Brandon Stewart, who came in and really uh, ignited the offense and took him on a long drive, two out of three for 40 yards. I would think we'd see Brandon Stewart here pretty soon again also. There you see number six, Brandon Stewart. Outside in the right. He will have the Tennessee first down. Samuel holding on to him for dear life. Moe Phillips, good block in that play. That's why you have to have depth at the tailback position. James Stewart, the starting tailback, has not been able to get on track tonight, but Aaron Hayden has come in in the second quarter and now in the fourth quarter with a block from Moe Phillips, picks up the first down. It was Willie Gaston who turned to flip after Moe's threw the block. 12 rushes, 85 yards for Hayden. Not bad for a backup. Uh, that's awfully good one-two punch. Play action and the slip screen to Billy Williams. Gets a block. And what a quick return by Ralph Staten. Oh, my goodness, did he recover well. And you were talking about that block. It was Nilo Silvan, number 83. One receiver blocking for the other. And Billy Williams has home run potential. He has so much speed. If he can get outside, he's capable of taking it to distance. Joey Kent comes into the lineup and Sylvan will go to the bench. Tennessee 10, Alabama 10. We're about to go under 11 minutes left in the ball game. Manning going to go on top. Oh my goodness, he had him and overthrew Billy Williams. Straight ahead Manning, and that's going to be enough for the first down to put up here. Mike Adam Lee, let's uh, get a little thought from you here as they pick up the first down. We're running a, in Jerry Colquitt's perfect world. He'd be the man starting tonight for Tennessee. It's been so tough on you, so difficult, yet you've been working with these young quarterbacks quite a bit, haven't you? That's right. Um, they came here, I guess, during July, during the summer, and um, we've been working with them all throughout summer workouts all the way up until now. We'll take a look at the play here, Jerry. Oh, he's still dancing. 15 and 20, and he'll take it all the way down to the 21 yard line. Very good block by Chester Ford, number 20, the fullback. And Aaron Hayden has just had a night that you just love to have your backup have. He just keeps juking and moving around and working north and south and up the football field. Taking it inside the 25. Ron, he really has been the offense oh, tonight for Tennessee. He really, really has. And that smile that he had on his face in that uh, headshot that we had of him probably is the same smile he's got on it right now because that put him well over 100 yards. They'll run him again. Gets outside on the left. Inside the 10. It is a first and goal, Tennessee. Seven yards for Aaron Hayden. Ron, they've had trouble running the football in against this Alabama defense. You see the blitz coming. They get outside on the left. Couldn't spin by the tackler. And let's go back to Mike Adamley and uh, continue that conversation. Mike? Jerry, first of all, your thoughts on the play of the two young quarterbacks and the game plan tonight and its conservative nature. 
Um, I think the play of Brandon Stewart and Petty Manning has been great thus far, um, considering all you know, their young quarterbacks and not knowing uh, a whole lot about the offense at the time right now. So I think it's a, a really positive that they're able to come in here and do a great job. Were you surprised that Brandon didn't start the second half? Well, I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure what to, what to say about that because, I mean, you never know what the coaches out there thinking. And, um, but, you know, I just think it's great that uh, we can come out here and, and um, play a good game in the second half. Do you, do you have a, a, a preference among the two guys who's, who's more suited? If you were the coach, I don't want to make them put you on the spot. Well, you know, I can't answer questions like that. But um, basically, I think, um, you know, whoever goes out there should um, should have a hot hand or whatever and is able to lead the team. And I think as long as they do that, then the team will be fine. Well, Jerry, good luck to you. I know you're working on that sixth year of eligibility. Best of luck. Mike, he's already worked on the top, I can tell you that. Third down. They reverse it out, throws it in the flat. And Mays Phillips is going to be hit by Willie Gaston on a magnificent one-on-one -on -one effort. Really three conservative calls down there again, playing for the field goal. This pass to Mose Phillips, just a little quick fake, but defended very well by Willie Gaston. Really, first down's the best shot that you have against that Alabama defense inside the 10-yard line. But again, you're playing with two freshman quarterbacks, and that's the plan. So Bexford with the field goal attempt of 22. Good pass and he knocks it home. So let's take a break. The Volunteers go on top 13 to 10. Malone this time will go down on the knee. Eleven plays on the drive, and they ate up almost five minutes, covering 69 yards. Hayden, 56 yards rushing on the drive, and Bexport with the field goal. Situation, seven minutes, 45 seconds left in this one. Seems like a lot of time, and it is, but as conservative as the play has been, this clock has gone very quickly. I think Alabama will now have to open it up a little bit. Barker reverses out, throws it complete, and he'll step out of bounds at the 29. Curtis Brown, nicely executed by the Crimson Tide. They've had that all night. The little fake inside, rolling either right or left. There's not been a good, probably a good job of contained by Tennessee. See the fake now. Here's Jay Barker rolling to the left side. Ben Talley trying to rush him in the secondary. Curtis Brown is working against Deron Jenkins with a big cushion. And Mike, you remember uh, last year, Barker with a lot less time than this. Engineered to drive, but ignited the Crimson Tide to bring it to a tie. Williams and he's going to be wrecked hard at the line of scrimmage. It's Tyrone Hines, number 47, the new middle linebacker, who puts a stopper on him. Let's see, close to the first down, and yep, they say he's going to have it. Tyrone Hines is out of Brownsville, Tennessee. He was a prop 48 player in 1992, and the coaches have said he's just done great academically. He's a very quiet and humble football player. Don't forget, coming up at the end of the ball game, Mike and I will pick the two Visa players of the game. Barker's pass thrown short and very smart, I think, is Ben Talley. Was all over him. Didn't really have anybody open enough to do any damage. No, they brought both outside linebackers again. Ben Talley's going to work against Kareem McNeil. Scott Gallion came inside, hands up against Jay Barker. Gallion's had an awfully good ball game. Played very well after moving from the middle linebacker position. First three football games. Sherman Williams, can he get outside? Working his way, cuts it back inside. Boy, Mike, you are exactly right as he gets the first down. He hides behind those big offensive linemen and then hits you with a burst of speed, and he's really hard to capture sometimes. Well, Larry Marmy, the defense coordinator, said he has an uncanny ability to find a soft spot in the defense. He has the vision to find that soft spot. And here we go again. Jay Barker, 29-1-1. One one. With, with the leadership in that huddle and on the football field for Alabama.
Roman Reigns. Ran into his own blocker and then got wrapped up. You could see uh, King, one of the first men there, along with Gallion, number 93. Also, Corey Gaines helping out on the tackle. Homer Smith, the new offensive coordinator for Alabama, trying to get good mix in this in this drive. A run play, then a roll out by Jay Barker, just trying to keep Tennessee off balance. Tennessee's better against Jay Barker when they blitz him. 13 to 10. Tennessee. Here they come with the blitz, and the running play will be stopped, maybe a gain of one. George Kia, the junior out of Milam, Tennessee, hit Paris Turner just as he got the handoff, and it's going to be third down. Well, Tennessee's had success tonight against Jay Bark and his offense. They have brought people off the corner. Do you get him in a third down situation? Do you defend him or do you come after him? I think you come after him. Three of the 11 third down conversions tonight for the tie. Whoop, they left him open. Then he throws the pass complete. That's Curtis Brown with the first down. And now here comes a late flag in. We have an incidental five yard face mask defense. He added on to the end of the run. Ten of 19, 128 yards, and a touchdown. Something to remember in this drive. Sean Summers did not start tonight. He was a starting defensive back. They've already lost Raymond Austin. So they're limited what they can do in the secondary. Tennessee playing with an injured secondary. They have a freshman playing Corey Gaines, number 30. About to go under five minutes left in the ballgame. Stegen tries to get outside. He does, and he will be out of bounds to stop the clock. Gene Stallings this season has had every game go to the wire. I mean, he's had close football games every week. Well, they've averaged winning by what? Seven, just over seven points a game. Well, they had a little bit of an easy time against Chattanooga, but Vanderbilt, they beat 17-7. The rest of them were close. Stager tries to turn the corner, does for a couple, and they're going to give him forward progress to the 27. Now it'll be third down, and the line to make is the 23. And that's the freshman, Corey Gaines, number 30, was able to come up and make the tackle. A lot of pressure on number 30. In the secondary, Corey Gaines, the freshman. And Sherman Williams comes back in on the big third down play for the Crimson Tide. 4.30, left in the ball game. Tennessee by three. It's Williams in the middle, cradles the tackler, and he'll have the Crimson Tide first down. Boy, what a gamer. What a gamer. Only 5'10", they say 186. Sometimes when you walk alongside him, he doesn't look that big, but he finds an opening if there is one. And he's out of Mobile, Alabama, and his mom goes to every football game that Alabama plays. He stays out with the linemen. After everybody leaves practice, the linemen stay out extra and run. He stays out with them because he wants them to know that he's with that offensive line. play to the open side. It's Lynch. Turns the corner. Inside the 10. Bumped out of bounds. It is first and goal. Crimson Tide. Chad Key is what makes this football play go. Credit Homer Smith with a great call. They haven't run the option. They're not an option football team. Chad Key, number 19, is going to come inside and he's going to crack back here and really set this football play up. Watch the crack back. Wow. And then a good block by Sherman Williams. I run the ball, I block. Tarrant Lynch down inside the 10. 
six and a half yards away. It's Williams. They run it back into the boundary, and he's going to be tripped up by Steve White. I think, Ron, where you have to worry about Alabama down here for Tennessee defensively is Jay Barker's ability to run the bootleg down here. They, you have to be so conscious of Sherman Williams, but also the bootleg here by Jay Barker. What Mike is saying is everybody has to stay at home. you got to check first and then go after the football. Williams turns the corner, touchdown Alabama. Gene hits Jay Barker. He says, just another day at the office, son. Michael Proctor. <laughs> Tennessee is trailing by four. As the extra point is good, we're going to go away for a moment. 3-0-4 left in the ball game. Alabama leads it 21 to 13. 17-13. That's our score. Alabama leading the ball game with 3:04 left to play. Offense is down on one knee in the sideline, and they know that as little time is is left, they got to get out and get it done in a hurry. They trail by four. Very returnable kick. This is Williams for the six. Oh my goodness, what a hit! Sherman Williams, how important is he to this football team? Well, I nicknamed him the painter a couple of weeks ago. Sherman Williams, the painter. Here's Sherwin Williams, the paint company. When he rushes for over 100 yards, Alabama 9-0. 16-0 when he scores a TD. And the painter has had a big night painting here in Knoxville. After this play, Mike, we've got an interesting replay to show you on the touchdown run. Man over the middle. Complete to Joey Kent. All right, look at the guard. The ball is snapped. Nope, he's already out of his stance, and he gets out on the corner to make a block. That's Possibly a procedure penalty could have denied that touchdown by Alabama. That's Maurice Belser, number 64, and he got to the corner a little quick. Man going to run, and he'll get out of bounds, stopping the clock at 2.43. That's Andre Royal, who was in pursuit. Alabama with three timeouts left. Tennessee with a couple. 17-13. Crimson Tide leads. And he gets by one. And he's going to have to run as much as he can and then get out of bounds again. That was Burton who was in pursuit. Alabama's not going to sit back and allow him to get a good look. They brought Andre Royal off the corner, number 36, to put some pressure on Peyton Manning. They're just going to try to keep him out of rhythm in this last, last drive. Line of scrimmage is the 41. They need the 48-yard line to pick up the first down. Brandon Stewart watches anxiously from the sideline, hoping that his teammate can get five here. 
Lobs it, has it complete. That's Joey Kent across midfield. It is first and ten, Tennessee. The change up by Alabama that time was to play pass defense and not go after Peyton Manning. Joey Kemp just bought some time. You're going to see the rush of the down linemen. Good coverage in the secondary. Joey Kent, number 11, continues to work against Cedric Samuel, number 13, to get open for the completion. Manning going to be hit, and boy, does he get taken down hard. That is Jeffries and three sacks against Tennessee tonight, and immediately the Volunteers call a timeout with 2.09 remaining. So let's take a break. Alabama 17, Tennessee 13. We'll be right back. Now 2.09 left in the ball game. Situation. Little Fulmer's Tennessee Volunteers had the ball at the 48-yard line, and following that sack, it was a loss of six. They need 16 to pick up the first down. Most importantly, though, they're down by four and barely over two minutes to play. Enough for the volunteer first down. Joey Kent again working on Samuel. They're always flushing Peyton Manning to the right side. If you notice, Ronnie always rolls to the right side. Drop back pass. Now they force him to the right side. He throws across his body to Joey Kent, number 11, for the completion. Fifth catch for 92 yards. Drop play. Here comes Hayden. Trying to get to the sideline, and he does out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. And all of a sudden, the third Saturday in October comes back to the script that you always expect. It ain't over yet. Aaron Hayden made this happen with just a little stutter. Steps ran through a tackle of Cedric Samuel, number 13. But remember, all evening, when Tennessee has got the ball inside the 10-yard line, they've had trouble with this Alabama defense. That's a reason, Mike, I have to wonder on first down. This is your they best. not throw the football. This is your best down to throw the football. Tennessee has one timeout remaining. Man in short drop, and he whips the pass. Kent has it complete. And it'll be minimal yardage as they'll spot him out at the nine. Actually, it's a gain of five, so it's not minimal. That's a that's a big plus play. Now you have a five-yard completion on first down. That gives you three cracks if you want to try to go up against them running the football. As hot as Hayden is, Stewart's back in the ball game. I was going to say you want to get the ball in here in Hayden's hands, but you'd have to give it to the sideline because that's where he's at. Blitz, handoff goes to Stewart, and somebody caught him by the ankle. I think it was Matt Parker. If he doesn't grab him, I think that Stewart might have been in the end zone. Strong runner. He's six foot one, 218 pounds. Third down. They need the four. Right guard was moving, Ron, for Tennessee. Manning gets thrown down, and the Tennessee coaching staff is out on the field saying, hey, wait a minute, the whistles were blowing. The guard had come out of his stance. We have a dead ball. Illegal movement, offensive line. Five what yards. was happening to the right guard on this play is he was trying to hear what was going on and he was moving just at the time the ball was snapped and the call for illegal procedure. Manning has hit his last five in a row. But the big situation here, he's got a third down and he needs the four yard line. We have a minute and 12 seconds remaining. Drills it. Tip. Oh my goodness, and went right by his hands. And I think it was Michael Rogers who got just enough of a deflection. Michael Rogers was in excellent position as the middle linebacker to tip that football. 
Peyton Manning on a straight drop back pass, trying to go over the middle. But number 52, Michael Rogers, will get his hand just barely on that football. I mean, he thought Joey Kent had a reception for a touchdown, and now Tennessee has called a timeout. It'll be fourth down, and we have 67 seconds left in the ball game. Peyton Manning, very emotional on the sideline. And with a fourth down situation, they got to take it to the four. They still got plenty of time to score. That's the most important thing right there, though, Mike. They need eight yards. Well, they can pick up the first down at the four yard line. But with 107 to go on the clock, I would think that Bill Oliver would really try to pressure Peyton Manning here. So it's a free play. Pass is intercepted at the two-yard line, but I believe, I believe they will gain a reprieve with the offside. Kelvin Moore, number 95. Defensive team, offside, five yards, replay the down. Philip Fulmer looks up at the clock and says, okay, we dodged one, a major one, but now we have a fourth down at about three yards. Number 94, Kelvin Moore jumped offside. Give him another shot here. Here comes the pressure. Pass is thrown incomplete. Sylvan is the man he wanted at the four yard line, and it was Gaston on the cover. Sometimes you have to learn your lessons on the field, but I'll tell you, there'll be another day for number 16, Peyton Manning. Getting a lot of valuable experience along with Brandon Stewart. The last play, trying to get the ball to Nilo Sylvan, number 83, and Gene Stalling says... his 30th victory tonight if they can get rid of the last 40 seconds he will tie Harry Gilmer Harry Gilmer had a record of 30 wins and nine losses in his stay at Alabama and for Jay Barker he will be 31 and one Crimson Tide players coming on the field. And Gene Stallings goes across to shake hands. His ball club still undefeated. Tennessee goes to three and four. Mike, it was a game that we talked about. When you get in a rivalry game like this, sometimes you play it real close to the best, and that was the way both teams played it tonight. Alabama gets the edge. So our final score, Alabama 17, Tennessee 13. For Mike Gottfried, Mike Adamley, and our entire outstanding ESPN crew, Ron Franklin saying so long, everybody, from Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee.